Samantha here, the Huga Stitcher. Welcome to my home uh, here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. And um, I'm really excited. I have a great episode planned for you today. I have previous finish. I have been, what I've been working on the last three weeks since my last video. And I have some haul, just um, lots of good stuff here. So um, I'm gonna jump right into it. I have a previous finish that I did I want to say eight years ago like it's been a while <laughs> it's been a while since I stitched on this and finished it um, but it has been sitting in my collection and I'm just really excited to bring it out and to share it with you today um, in my past videos I think I have eight now and every video I like to share um, one of my past finishes and this is my last one this is my last previous finish and it was worthy of being framed. I thought it's the one I'm most excited to share with you about. And um, yeah, I got it framed a couple of months ago. I had reached out to our framer here in Winnipeg at Lizzie B's, the local needle workshop that I work at. And we have a very talented framer there. Her name is Annika and she does amazing work. I have been admiring the things that she has framed that um, customers have brought in of uh, their stitching. And every time I walk into work and I see a new framed piece on the wall, I'm like, what, this is so good, so good. She's very, very talented. So I knew exactly which one I was gonna get framed from her. And she picked out some um, great suggestions, she had great suggestions, and this is what her and I were able to come up with. So this is a Mirabilia um, Shipwreck. No, it's called Siren of the Shipwreck. And it is a design that came out in 2013, I believe, 2014, somewhere around there. And I immediately purchased it and stitched it. And I think I finished it 2015. So it took me a while. <laughs> so without further ado, let me share it with you. So this is what it looks like. Here she is. Look at this. So if you know this design, so Mermaid, she is, you know, from a shipwreck. She found a chandelier and she's bringing it up through the water. Like, look at the movement in here. Isn't it so beautiful? So I'm going to bring it close so that you can see it. Look at all the gems in there, all the crystals and beads. <laughs> and she's got some beautiful um, things in her hair too. Lots of shiny krennic and beads everywhere. Isn't it gorgeous? So I wanna tell you a little bit about when I was stitching this. Um, I had decided, usually when I stitch a Mirabilia, I usually start right in the middle and I work my way down. Um, and then it, once I've done that, I have to go back up and going up is actually the most challenging for me. <laughs> um, anyway, so with this piece, I was very excited to stitch the tail. Obviously the colors are gorgeous. Um, you can see even this beautiful green color was is absolutely stunning. Um, and yeah, stitching the tail was actually probably my biz biggest mistake of doing that first because the chandelier, like working her my way up into her skin and hair was fine. It was the chandelier that I had left for last and it was so hard to get through. So hard because there's lots of white stitching and you have to leave a lot of spaces for all the crystals and then a ton of beating right so um yeah <laughs> uh, I have stitched another mermaid and I've decided to start the opposite way I started in the middle I worked my way up and then I saved the tail for last which I suggest doing to all of you if you've ever stitched a mermaid to do that because <laughs> then you'll get a finish you'll be able to get through it I, I think anyway so um here it is here is my mermaid piece what do you guys think of this didn't she uh, Annika do such an amazing job we had done this um, this frame that kind of reminded us of like mermaid scale and um, the matting is like, how do I describe it? Kind of like velvet. So it's got some texture to it. And um, yeah, I've chosen this beautiful like navy blue to go in the center to kind of give it that deep circle around it. It's absolutely amazing. I can't wait to hang this up. Um, this piece is going into my uh, basement. I have um, recently, we're still working on, but we're getting very close actually to renovating our basement. We have to do like baseboards and doors, and then we just need to get some furniture. 
hooks and this is going to be the first thing that is being hung on the wall um, in my new stitchy space so i'm really excited about that it's going to look amazing oh it's going to look so good <laughs> so i hope you enjoyed that um, my mermaid is absolutely gorgeous so thank you so much for letting me share that with you so I wanted to share with you uh, what I've been working on for the month of March. I have been keeping track of everything in my needlework book of days, really, really fun, 2022. And for the month of March, me and my daughter had a lot of fun um, decorating the pages. We went through uh, my sticker book and tried to find all of the green, greeny blue stickers to kind of decorate the page for March. Looks really fun. And um, yeah, I actually have only worked on two projects in the last three weeks since last time I saw you. Um, and that is due to um, having my mermaid framed. I have been stitching on my other mermaid like mad. Check this out. So this is um, Mermaid of Pearls by Mirabilia. This is my oldest whip. I started this at the beginning of the pandemic, um, March 2020. So it's exactly two years old and I am dying to finish this, to get it done so that I could have another mermaid fit framed. Wouldn't that be amazing? So um, here's what I've been able to do. Last time you saw it, I was halfway through the pattern. I had completed um, right up to about here. I had done most of the beading um, in her hair and all the pearls. Actually, there's still a ton more to do in there, but a lot of the little um, the little um, beads I was able to finish. And then over the last three weeks, I have been stitching all of this. All of this stitching has been done. And um, it has been so, so fun. You know, um, I have been thinking a lot about comfort stitching. You know, that pattern that you bring out that just like you can just fly, like you know what comes next and how to stitch it really well. And that's a mirabilia for me. Um, when I open up a mirabilia pattern, um, I immediately remember some of the symbols. I can recognize, you know, see these deep colors, these deep blues. Um, in the pattern, the way that the designer Nora Corbett does them, she'll choose symbols that kind of have like um, maybe it'll be a D and it'll be fully full. It'll be like a black D and it, you can tell that that's where the deep color is and that she'll use a lighter symbol, um, a thinner one that's for the lighter stitching. So I just, when I see her patterns, I really understand how they work and how they flow. And um, yeah, you just start from the top and you work your way down, right? It's really, you just move your ruler down one row at a time and away you go. So um, it has been really, really fun to stitch. I have a little bit more to do. I have to complete the tail here. There's a, um, I don't know, there's a few more stitches that go in here. Uh, there are a few bubbles. So see here, I'll bring it close. See these bubbles? There's a few more bubbles for me to complete. Down in her tail, there's a few more. I think there's one here, maybe one there. And then I believe there's a couple that are up top here too that I still need to do. Um, they're mostly chronic, um, which is fine. I don't mind using that, but um, just gotta complete those. And then all the stitching will be done. And then it's back to beading again. So I completed most of the beads that are at the top. I have this beautiful heart charm that goes right in the center. It's this beautiful pale pink color. Isn't that pretty? Um, that's gonna go right in her hand. You can see the spot where the, you can almost see the heart there. And then there are these, they're monstrous, they're so big. They're called glass pebble beads. Check those out. That's going in there. So I see there's a few um, that are in her hair right now. And then there's more that just kind of go all, oh, you can almost see the spaces. Um, there's a whole bunch, this whole package actually, I counted, there's just enough. There's maybe like two or three extra in here. Um, yeah, that go all the way down big giant beads. And then there's um, a couple of fun um, treasures. I don't know if you can see those. Yeah, those fun ones that are um, in her, a couple of them that go in here. And then uh, there's more beading. There's more white beads, like the pearls. There's more clear. There's more of these like seafoam kind of green colored beads that are all down in here. There's tons of them. So I'm gonna be beading like a mad woman. <laughs> and then this is gonna be done. How awesome, look at that. I could look at these all day. 
They're so good. <laughs> so good. So that's it. That's my Mermaid of Pearls. Getting close to a finish, everyone. It's really, really exciting. And then the other project that I've been working on, I was sort of planning to do this, you know, on the nights that I come home from work and have supper and then, you know, sit down to relax and stitch for a little bit. You know, sometimes I can be too tired to, um, to tackle maybe a mermaid, but um, I've been working on this pattern from Owl Forest Embroidery. It's called Patchwork Calendar. I shared with you last time um, my last video because I had just gotten it and started February, which was this one right here with the squirrels. And this was what I was able to finish from that one. So it's not completed, but I plan to save this till next February to finish it up. I'm going to start a new one every single month. So for the month of March, which was this one right here with the sheep, I decided to start in a different area. Well, I started in the middle and I worked my way up um, and I'm leaving the border on this one. Um, so that's Next time I pick this up next March, I'm not doing like all the borders on every single one. Uh, it'll be something different. So anyways, here's what I've been able to do so far. I started in the middle and I worked my way up. And I have to admit, um, the very first week I worked on this, I was making great progress and then I made a mistake. <laughs> and it was like, maybe I can, no, I have to take it out. It wasn't in a, it was right in, it was actually right when I first started, I'd messed up these, um, I don't know what the branches of this, uh, motif and it was going to be all off. So I had done all this work up top here. So I had to just take out some stitching here and restitch it. It was okay. It's good now. And, um, I'm excited to keep working on this. I have another week left in March, so I'm going to keep going. I would love to get down to maybe the sheep. Um, and then next month I'm going to start April, which is, uh, these cute, adorable bunnies. Oh, so good. So I'm, I wanted to show you what the, um, what the color looks like because every month you just grab a new piece of fabric and a new color and away you go. Super simple, but it's got these beautiful purple and green colors in there. Stunning, right? Really fun. I'm really enjoying that project. So great. All right, are you ready? We're gonna do some haul. I'm gonna share a few things uh, with you that I have purchased over the last couple of weeks that I've adding to my collection and some new exciting items. I have um, here the Sure Light. So I, I'm an enhanced stitcher and I don't necessarily need to have magnification. I have glasses, um, but during the day when I have great sunlight, like today, great lighting, I can stitch away, no problem. Um, but in the evening, I do find it more challenging, um, not well to see, but also, it, you know, I'm, my eyes are tired and I'm tired. Um, and this new light has changed everything for me. So I'm not sure if you've seen these before. This is the Sheer Light. We sell these at, at uh, Lizzie B's and they've been flying off the shelf lately. And I'm like, you know what? I want to get one of these. I want to get all set up. I want to have a lamp and a chair and, and all the things, right? So um, the cool thing about this light is that it has three different um, sizes. So you've got the floor lamp, which is how I'm using it now, right beside my couch. I have it set up uh, for the floor lamp. And then you can also, um, you know, unscrew the, the bottom here or this piece here and make it into just a table lamp if you want. And there's also this really cool clamp um, that comes with it that you can put the cord into here and clamp it onto your table. That's convenient if you're stitching at, at home at the table or if you're at a, a retreat or something like that. And it also comes with a battery pack which would be great for stitch-ins or going over to your girlfriend's house or whatever. You don't have to worry about a plug. You can just um, plug in your battery pack and away you go. So how cool is that? Um, and I've been really, really enjoying this. Like it's been so enjoyable to stitch in the evening um, using the, my new lamp. Um, obviously I can see really good, but it has like the three different settings where you can be like, I want the cool lighting times three or I want the warm lighting times three, or you could have like, warm and cold, warm and cold, like, like, oh, it's so good. 
it's so good. So I highly recommend getting these if you are in the market for a new lamp or you don't have one yet. This is a great purchase. I'm so, so pleased with it. So that was one of my big purchases, um, adding to my collection of um, stitchy things. And then um, a lovely viewer uh, from last episode had asked a question about, uh, do you remember me talking about the Zodiac um, signs that I'm doing by Tiny Modernist? Well, I haven't started it yet. But um, one of the viewers had suggested, hey, have you thought about using like glow in the dark floss for possibly, you know, maybe one of the moons or something like that? And it got me thinking, how cool would that be? And at work, um, there was recently um, a stitcher who brought in a piece to be framed. And it was really fun because it was on black um, cloth and it was done in DMC a glow in the dark floss. And it was really cool, everyone. It was really cool. It was um, Lord of the Rings, right? One of the um, symbols from Lord of the Rings. And so when it we turned off the lights, it was glowing in the dark. I'm like, that's it. I'm, I want to try this. So this is DMC E940. And right away, you can tell like it, it looks thicker, right? It has a thicker look to it but I'm really excited to give it a try. It works really, really well. So I've got a couple of them here that I'm gonna to add to my collection and possibly add, um, maybe I'll mix the color, one of these and one of the color of the moon and stitch that in there, cause that would be really fun. And then it got me thinking around the shop, I was looking at other things. Did you, do you know that Krynik has a glow in the dark colors? I was so shocked by this. I was like, how did I not know about this? So they have blending filament and they have um, number four, very fine braid, and they also have it in number eight, all kinds of different colors. So I've grabbed a couple of um, blending filaments. So I've got a white here. It is 02F. So any of the um, Krynics that end in the letter F, you know that that's a glow in the dark. Little tidbit for you. This one here too, glows in the dark, how cool. And then this one is a braid. And I'm not sure what I'm going to use these for yet, but I know the right project is going to come along and be like, oh, I know what I'm using this for. <laughs> they do, they work. I've tried them out. Like once you've, you know, kind of charged them up in the light and then go into a dark space, they glow. It's so fun. <laughs> so fun. So I had to have those. Um, and then lastly, because I've been getting so close to finishing my Mirabilia, my big mermaid, I don't have any other ones on the go. So I've been thinking a lot. I've been going through my collection of Mirabilias and I selected um, what I'm kidding up next. So this is probably my favorite one out of all of that I own um, that I've been really, really excited to start. Now it's a big pattern. This is a Mirabilia. It's called Mooka by Nora Corbett. You recognize this pattern? Oh, when did it come out? 2018. She's amazing. That bed, the chandelier hanging from the ceiling, the candles, her wings, the colors are absolutely gorgeous. So I'm really excited. So I'm still I'm not trying to figure out the fabric. I usually for something like this, because it's so colorful on its own and there's a lot to it, I might stick with the um, Water Lily Linen um, from Witch Else. So possibly get that 32 count most likely, um, but I need to get that. And these are some of the colors. This is how I usually kit up a Mirabilia. I get all of the colors that I need and stick them all together um, and away we go. So here's some of the beads. Lots and lots of beads there. Oh, I should take this out. These beads are really pretty. 18827. Oh, those are, look really fun. Yeah, really, really pretty. I wonder where those are in the pattern. <laughs> All right, so here's some of the colors. We have um, a water lily silk. This goes around the border. That's gonna be gorgeous. And then look at some of these colors. You can see Mooka's colors in here. So, so fun. Beautiful greens, teals and dark blue. Oh yeah, that's gonna be so good. <laughs> I'm really, really excited about this. I am going to order the fabric 
and maybe in the next month or so, um, I don't know. I'm going to get a start on this, I think, pretty soon. Mooka, she's going to be big. She's a big one. I wanted to take this uh, opportunity to thank each and every single one of you for all of your lovely comments. Um, I really appreciate it. It brings me a ton of joy. You know, it's actually really exciting. Once I finish filming and then upload to YouTube and let it go live, it's really, really exciting for me. I spend probably the next day like reading all your comments and just like, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you thank you very much for all of the lovely comments you all leave me um, I'm gonna leave a description box uh, below that will list um, some of the you know floss tubers that I mentioned um, the patterns that I mentioned in this video so that you could go check them out and until next time everyone thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you again possibly you know in April um, in another three weeks take care now bye bye